Yes, Ellen. I just returned from a Sister Cities International Conference in Washington. We were addressed by Senator Durbin, who said that the budget is less than 2% for international. And he wanted us to urge our senators and congressmen to, number one, not cut the budget, and number two, to accept the budget that's being proposed by President Obama. Um, I personally, uh, with a few people, had gone to see both Congressman Marines, uh, Al and Gene. Uh, Gene was there himself. He was, we didn't even talk. I mean, he was so gung-ho on the international part that we didn't really have to convince him. Um, Al Green's legislative assistant was very in favor of it. Uh, we went to um, Senator Cornyn's office and Senator Hutchison's office. Now, what we did with Texas, or even Houston, was being done by the other people from Sister Cities International. Oh, great. So we did have a concerted effort to, number one, not cut the budget, and number two, accept this budget. And I think that's really the only way to save the day on this issue is to have a very um, concerted effort by, by citizens all over the U.S. who are involved in international affairs, either through their professional or academic experience. Otherwise, they're not going to hear us. I, have, I always feel very frustrated because I'm in, when people say, write to your senator or your congressman. I live in Washington, D.C., and so I have zero voice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Nelson. Ambassador, first of all, on a professional side, let me say, uh, as, as, as a company that has been um, operating for several decades in, in the energy, particularly in the energy sector in, uh, in the Middle East, mm -hmm. where we had to work with, um, with politicians and the autocratic regimes at the, at the highest level there yes. to, because of the energy, the, the nature of our projects. I must say that this is one of the most profound and knowledgeable analysis in, a, in an overview fashion in those countries that I've, that I've really, really enjoyed. I'm sure my colleague will, uh, will, uh, will agree. Oh, thank you very much. So, You're very kind. Excellent. Excellent. Thank overview. you. On a personal level, um, obviously what's going on in the region, but particularly in Egypt, uh, I was born in Alexandria in, mm -hmm. in Egypt. And what is going on right now um, uh, brings back the memories as to why we ended up here mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 54. And that is because it was ex exactly the same, except that it was a coup. Mm -hmm. Then joined by the people, so they called it revolution. But it was it, unlike this time where it was the people and then the military joined. There was a, uh, uh, like today in Egypt, they have the, the military council. Uh, in, uh, in 52, it was the idea to remove the king only, but leave everything. Egypt had parliamentarian uh, system there. Uh, I was born in a, in a hospital called the Israeli Hospital. So that tells you about the relationship at the time, how it was. Uh, uh, but, uh, but at the same time, that council, military council, who has swore that as soon as they stabilize the country within a few months, they will go back to their barracks and leave them, the uh, politicians to, to rule the country. Uh, Multi-party, parliamentarian system, proper elections, and all of those things. What we hope is that military, military council, and I absolutely agree with you, so far so good. Mm -hmm. They're doing everything that we hope they, they will do to stabilize the country, but do not get involved in politics. Unfortunately, uh, in 1954, instead of going back to their barracks, <coughs> some of the military council, yeah. which was called the Revolutionary Council mm -hmm. at the time, decided to take over, mount a coup against their colleagues, and took over the country and we saw uh, uh, almost 60 years of military rule in Egypt, and we hope this is not going to, to be yeah. the case. Uh, it was led at the time by, by, uh, by a guy called uh, Gamal Abdul Nasser. Um, they, they chose uh, Nasser as a, as, a, as a short 
name, and that's why probably a lot of you saw that I immediately changed when they made a type one and put Rot Nassar with an E. I have an allergy against that name, so I went immediately with a pen and put Nassar, not Nasser. But, uh, but I wanted to say more thank you very much for this oh, excellent thank you. Well, I share your, your thoughts uh, on Egypt uh, being, uh, I, I was born in Cairo, not Alexandria, but uh, watching those images for me in both e in Cairo and Alexandria was really uh, a very important day in my life. So I pray that this time it will go in a different direction. Absolutely. So we'll hope for that. Yes, it is. It is. It's, it's, it's time to <clears throat> correct something that went wrong in the, in the 50s and yeah. trying to re-establish what Egypt had before 1952 and particularly before 1954 when the yeah. military really took over yeah. the country. So. Yeah. Well, it will set the example, so we, uh, I certainly hope that uh, the military this time, I think they've lost the appetite to rule, I may be wrong, but I think they're not, in, I mean, they, right now there aren't too many people who would probably want to rule. Egypt is going to be a very big challenge, but I think the military realizes they don't have the tools to, to really run the country full time. So I'm, I think they will make the transition. My concern is how that transition will be made. Yeah, and will they, uh, will they allow for a true, uh, because in the end they are really the stability. I mean, you know, we, we saw how they were greeted in, the, in Tahrir Square because the, the police were such, uh, you know, violently hated that uh, the, the military was the savior of the day. Uh, and they really made the difference. I mean, uh, one uh, blogger wrote a, an interesting point. He said, well, the revolution in Egypt really was not a popular revolution. It was a military coup and using the, the popular revolt as a cover. I totally disagree with that. I think you put it very well, uh, Mr. Nassar, because it was the popular revolution and then the military joined. They decided that they could no longer carry Mubarak. So yes, they asked him to, you know, leave the country and finally uh, after that miserable speech uh, he actually resigned. So uh, I think they came in as a second uh, support but not they were not the leaders on this one. No, they, they didn't, you're absolutely correct and as you know even the, the, the okay Tantawi of course is the figurehead, the dad, but it was somebody like Sami. Sami Anand, yeah. Anand and he was even here in Washington yeah. when, when it happened so it was not even designed uh, that was your, again you're, 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 you're absolutely, yeah. absolutely no. right. Not uh, this time. Yes. You touched on the military's investment and economics in Egypt earlier and I've been reading an article that was kind of touching on the businessmen that were all arrested now. Yes. And that there was kind of a feud going on between the military that had you know, the military commanders who either were still in power or were retired who had gotten economic benefits and companies from Mubarak. Oh, yeah. And Mubarak's son was supporting the private sector and there was kind of a feud between those two groups and as soon as Mubarak was gone, all the private sector business people who were in politics got arrested and indicted by the military who was in power now. Do you see that rift going on? Well, uh, the, the military was never enamored by the, Mubar the Gamal Mubarak circle. You're absolutely right. First of all, they didn't like the, the pace of privatization because the, the military didn't, I mean, they saw that in, in terms of stability. If you privatize an industry and you have all these unemployed people, it's going to be a problem in the country. So for them, you know, they, they saw the <coughs> private sector as, you know, questionable, uh, how, how big it should get and how powerful it should get. So there's always been that friction. Uh, do I think they are going after people like Ahmad Az as a revenge you know, and, and not going after their own? I think definitely they're not going to go after their own. Um, but uh, some, I think some of the business people are going to be victims of the mood now to kind of make them all accountable. For example, Rashid Mohammed Rashid. I mean, I, I, I don't know him very well, but I think I, I, I know enough about him and I was uh, there when he was the Minister of Tourism. He's not a corrupt guy, no. you know, by any scale. I mean, in Egypt to survive, you're almost, by definition, you have to be corrupt because you have to go and pay everybody to get anything done. So, but 
I don't think this guy was on was uh, really uh, in the in the level of Ahmad Az and others. Uh, but surely, you know, I mean, now they're trying Habib al Adli, the former Minister of Interior. Uh, all these people had very questionable practices of giving away, you know, public land, selling it as private land, and giving, I mean, even the privatization, the way it was done, and why the gap of distribution of wealth is, you know, they would sell companies to their cronies and mm -hmm. not really open it to the public. So your everyday Egyptian businessman didn't have opportunities that Ahmad Aiza had or others in the in the Gamal Mubarak circle.